Boys and girls, today we're going to be starting a new unit on weather. Um, who can, who knows what they think they know what weather is? Chris. What is like rain and wind Good. all around us? Good. It's like wind. It's like rain. What else is it kind of like? Leo. It's basically like temperature. It's like temperature. Anybody else? Marion. Weather is a cycle. It's a cycle. Perfect. We're outside today so we can start to make ob observations about what the weather is like and to eventually help predict it. People have been around predicting weather for many, many years. Hundreds of years they've tried to see what weather is going to be like in the days to come. Okay, But new technology has really made advanced. So you, they know what the weather is like almost every minute. They know if it's going to rain, but are they always right? No. no, they're not always right. Sometimes they make mistakes. So I want you to, um, with a partner or with two people, go stand up and go around and make observations about the temperature, the wind, the clouds, whatever you think, anything about weather is. All right? Yes. Go. In this unit, students go outside and they observe the weather and then we start talking about the weather. Um, they end up engineering their own weather instruments that they can use and then they use those weather instruments to create weather scripts and um, do what a real meteorologist would do which was act it out and even record it and edit it together. What do you observe today? It's very windy and cold. Yeah. Okay, it's very windy and cold. What, what kind of temperature do you think there is? I think like maybe 40. Yeah, it's really cold, right? Like 40s, 50s, good. What else do you notice? There's lots of wind. Oh, it's really windy, yeah, right? It's really windy. Like my hair is not <laughs> staying in place. Neither is yours, right? No. It makes you. Is it? Does it make it? Does the wind make it feel colder? Yeah. Yeah, it really does. It's like wind chilly, right? What else? It's not really raining. No, it's not raining. What? What do you call when it's not raining? Cloudy. Okay, it's cloudy, right? But sometimes the sun's poking out. Do you notice that? Yes. Yeah, so the sun's sometimes poking out. So what do you call that? Sunny. It's partly cloudy, right? Partly cloudy. Sometimes it's sunny, sometimes it's cloudy, right? Yeah. And it's windy. Good. All right, y'all write those down. In the introduction of the unit, students go outside and they just simply observe the weather. They take notes. They observe what's happening. They talk about the wind, the temperature, um, and they write all this down. And the connection is because they use their five senses to observe the weather when they're outside. But then we start talking about how people use different tools to um, predict the weather and see what's going to happen. Um, and we talk about how they have been, people have been predicting the weather for hundreds of years and how that technology has advanced and they can predict it almost every day, almost 100% accurately. So it's really cool for them to get to know that and to observe the weather. What do you notice about this weather tool right here? It measures the water. Yeah, it measures the water. But what about the water does it measure? The rain. How much it rained. How much it has rained, right? Yeah. So we can use these tools to measure the amount of rain that's fallen. Why do you think that might be important? Because if so, that we know if William? Oh wait, if we could tell if it's gonna flood, if we get too too much rain, we can see if there might be a flood warning or something, right? Good. I think incorporating project-based learning with standardized testing, I don't think it has to be in conflict. I think that that those things can um, coexist and complement each other. Um, we have standards and we have to know that kids are learning them and standardized testing is a way that that we are required to do it. It's, it maximizes our ability to assess many children at one time. Um, Project-based learning is the teaching side of it. That's how you teach them what will be evaluated on standardized testing. And I think we can do that. Those two things can coexist peacefully. Um, it's a matter of knowing um, you know, being clear about what your objective is. And, and the outcome is just you have students who do well on the assessments. Today you're going to be becoming meteorologists and engineers. What do you think a meteorologist is? William. A news person. It's a news person, but what do they do on the news? You see them on the, come on the news, what do they do? Marcos. 
They predict the weather. They predict the weather. They're the news guys get behind the map and they're like, look what temperature it is. This is what the weather's going to be like, right? Yes, sir. Okay, but they have to use tools to help them predict that weather, right? What do you think an engineer does? Sarad. They build stuff. They build things. How, what makes an engineer's job important? Ricky. So they can build stuff and give it to the meteorologist so they can predict the weather. Good. So they might have to problem solve. If something doesn't work out on an instrument or a tool that they make, they have to figure out a different way to make it, right? The unit is structured with an introduction, a mini lesson, project time so students can work on their project, and then a closing. The mini lesson is to give students the knowledge they need to complete the tasks. If you're still, you still have to present them with knowledge through games or PowerPoints to help them understand those concepts. Then they break out into their groups where they start working on their project and using the knowledge they learned in the mini lessons to help perfect their project and make sure they're doing it in a, the correct way to be successful. You are going to be creating a news crew with your team. Okay, that's like a news station like, like they do on the, on the TV. And it's your job to um, create a forecast for an upcoming holiday weekend. And um, you need to um, build these weather instruments. You're going to be building an anemometer, a rain gauge, a wind vane, or a barometer. Okay? Um, and you're going to engineer. I'm going to give you some supplies. And it's your job just to create something that would measure those things. Measure the wind speed, okay? Measure um, how much rain, it, how much it rained. Students start the unit by um, first researching about the different weather instruments. They um, look into anemometers and rain gauges and barometers, and they kind of figure out how they work and what they measure. Then students start by engineering their own weather instruments. They build them from scratch without much guidance from the teacher. The teacher facilitates them um, into building instruments that work, and they are given materials that are limiting, but not so limiting that they don't have enough stuff to work with. The challenge is for them is that they do not have that, the materials that they need. They have to problem solve on how to make it work with the materials they do have. Because that's what's going to be going inside of it. We're going to need a small pencil. That's not going to be supportive. Exactly. We're going to like make it. Okay. It's going to be tough. Okay. Okay. Hey, that's the next. Do you have any extra erasers from here? Yeah. Take it out. The teacher in a project based unit should always be walking around the room facilitating the needs of their students going around conferencing one-on-one -on -one and indiv individually to make sure that their needs are met. This is different than um, a traditional classroom where students might be sitting in desk, row to row, pencil, paper. Students are up actively engaged around the room. The teacher is constantly circling the room, checking for understanding, questioning students, and helping them out, whatever needs they, they need to, to meet the standard. What does that measure? Wait. It measures the one speed. So how are you going to design something that will measure that? Well, there, there's like little cups on there. So, like, we, we can, um... Did you figure out that little cups will, like, catch the wind in order to make it, like, spin? Yeah. So we're making, like, these as cups. Uh -huh. And then we're going to stick it on here, and then it's going to spin. Oh, okay, cool. And we don't have any tape. We don't have any tape on this, so... Able to oh, so you're going to leave this untaped? Yeah, we're going to so keep it's able it to move around? But when you lift it up, how is, that going to, how is it going to stop? Well, what we could do is, but if we taped it on the bottom, it wouldn't be able to spin. Like, it right. right so you're going to keep it from falling through the bottom of the cup when you lift it up? Oh, Leo! Well, we, could probably we can make a little paper floor. How about that? Oh, stick it. Huh? We can make a little floor. I'll make a floor. Gotcha. Mr. Ogburn is an effective teacher. Um, obviously, he's creative and dynamic and energetic. Um, but I think really the one thing that I always think about him being an effective teacher is 
Um, he really, really has a deep-seated feeling that every student can learn and that it's a, his responsibility really to figure out how they do it and um, to really go after it and figure out how to reach them. And he really feels strongly that, that every kid in this class, if given the right opportunities, can be successful. Groups of students build weather stations with all the different types of weather instruments. Mathematics is integrated um, while students go outside and they collect their, their weather data. Um, they use the different measurements to convert to different units of measurement, and then they even bring their data inside so they can um, do a line plot. Um, and we do graphs and stuff, and we compare them to what other people observed. Um, and it really helps integrate those components um, to help them master both those standards. So how does, yeah, how does your anemometer work? How is it working? The wind goes inside the cups and pushes them. Yeah, so and it makes it go faster. Does it get faster when the wind, how, how do, what makes it go faster? When the wind is pushing. Yeah, hold it up again. I want to see it work again. That's really cool, right? <laughs> cool. All right. Cool. Why do you think you could make your instrument a little bit stronger and better when you engineered it? Um, we could have used a pencil, I guess. Oh, right, you could have, good, you could have made it, this part a little bit stronger, right? I think because it bends, it actually is not as accurate because it's making it kind of off, right? What else, Saran? And we can, like, try, try, try to connect these kind of, instead of using a toothpick because it's like, it just keeps spinning. Okay. It needs to be a little bit more sturdy. Well, Good. Sometimes so sometimes it goes between the the two the two um things and to calculate it sometimes me and Sarad we kind of like try to balance it out yeah. and then like you balance the straw out and then balance the um. Good. So making it straighter, so to make it more accurate, it, it is pointing in the right direction, which is really good. But it is kind of like going back and forth, right? Uh -huh. So when we engineer things, it's good. Engineers usually they um. They have to make mistakes to make things better, right? The second part of the project is where students start creating their scripts to take on the role of a real meteorologist. Um, students start by writing a script, taking on different roles as reporters, as, um, as a news anchor, and even the meteorologist. And they write scripts based on the weather data that they collected outside. Um, so it becomes more real life and more authentic in the way that they collect their data. Hello. Um, air pressure determines kind of what, like, what precipitation might happen. That's what the barometer measures, right? Like if there's high air pressure, then it's rain happens. A high or a low pressure, it might change the um, the precipitation. It could change the temperature. Yeah, I know. Does a lot of things. Um, can, should I say? I'm Seth, I'm Steve, and the computers are picking up that. Yeah, you can say that, or you can say our weather instruments are picking up that, that okay. you built, right? Mm -hmm. Because you can use those as props in your, um, in your, when you film it, when you record it. Okay. Betty, this is my The anchors will welcome everybody who's watching, right? And then... What's usually the first couple things they do in, on, a, on the news? Yeah, they tell them the name is just like, this is Channel 2 Action News live, right? Reporting, or, and then they'll tell their top stories, right? And usually what do they do next? The concept of STEAM is integrated in my unit in many ways. The overarching standards that are addressed are science standards about the weather. Um, then in different parts, you'll see the different other elements, the other elements come in. Um, through technology, we um, use a, the iPads and the smart board and students edit their um, weather scripts together and they use green screen technology. They always, that just instantly engages them. Math is integrated when they collect data and they interpret that data and they use line plots. They um, convert different measurements. Um, drama is then integrated for the arts through them, the use of writing their scripts and then acting it out in front of the green screen. And the engineering comes in when they engineer and design and create their own weather instruments. Using um, this app that will help get the green screen stuff on there, 
We're going to record first, and then you're going to be able to input the different types of backgrounds for your script. You can choose images off the internet that you can use, um, but we're going to go one at a time. I'm going to let you guys film it. Make sure when you're, when you're filming, you're really steady, okay? Because we don't want to see you doing like this on the, on the background. It has to be really still, like, like a stick, okay? And then I need whoever's acting, you've got to put emotion to it. Can it be they're all shy? You have to really get into it, okay? Because that's what makes a good actor, right? This is what a real-life meteorologist would do. They use their weather tools to collect the data and then use it to forecast the weather on TV. Um, that's an important learning experience, and it's, it's real life. It's what they really do. And I always encourage students to use their scripts and practice them and try to memorize the lines the best they can and to really think about what an actual meteorologist would do. Tomorrow, there's going to... Tomorrow there's going to be a cold front coming in from Alabama and it's going to bring lots of snow. But the temperatures have been rising and the snow will most likely melt and there will be some flooding in some areas. What makes Mr. Ogburn an effective teacher is simply for me that he has heart. When you start with a person that has heart um, in education, it's a person that will go the extra mile, that would do whatever it takes and that will continue to pour themselves into their daily jobs. Um, and for them, it's not really a job. It's just another day. And for Mr. Ogborn, he's effective because his students understand what he stands for. They understand his expectations. And it's because they know that he truly believes in them and that he wants them to do an amazing job. When students walk in the classroom asking you, when are we going to work on our project? That's when I know that a project has been successful. They are engaged, they're motivated to learn, they, are, they want to work on their projects and um, to collaborate with their peers. It, creating an authentic lesson helps do this. It connects it to the real world. They can go outside the classroom and the four walls of the classroom and see weather, meteorology, engineering, arts, technology, math, all integrated into the real world, especially when it's applied in the classroom. You have to bridge outside the walls of your classroom in order to give them real life opportunities.